Okay, Bethany, you may begin. Okay. Let's open with prayer this morning. <clears throat> Father, I thank you so much for the privilege that it is to share your word. Father, that um, as you speak to me and have ministered to my heart, now I have the opportunity to share what I've learned. And Father, I just ask that this would be an encouragement and a challenge to those who hear it. Father, I pray to you that you would just um, empty me of myself, Father, so that I do this all in your strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. His wife had been stolen, given to another man who was more worthy to be called the son of a king. And he, he had been running for years with no end in sight. Currently, he was guarding sheep when he was destined to rule a nation. And to make matters worse, the only man who had any restraining effect whatsoever on the maniac king who was chasing him was gone. The spiritual leader of Israel the visible embodiment of the word of the Lord, his mentor. The prophet Samuel was dead. Samuel's death left David alone and the nation of Israel at the mercy of Saul. I don't think it's a stretch to say that David knew the meaning of stressed out. And this was his frame of mind when he heard the news that a local, a wealthy man in that area where they um, had set up camp was throwing a party. The occasion? Sheep shearing. Sheep shearing was a time of feasting and celebration, a time to bask in the blessing of God. And this wouldn't have necessarily benefited David in any way except for the fact that the man holding the party, Nabal, was no stranger to David. See, David and his men were camped out in the barren grassland uh, called the Desert of Maon. And as was customary, they had taken it upon themselves to guard the flocks and herds of sheep that the local wealthy men and cattlemen would send out to graze there. It was a service that they would provide to these men as a means of making a living. And it was only polite for these men to then repay David and his army with food or provisions as some sort of payment. Well, it was sheep shearing time. A time for celebration and feasting. A time to return the favor. And that's where we pick up our story this morning in 1 Samuel chapter 25. First Samuel 25, we'll begin in verse 4. When David heard that Nabal was shearing his sheep, he sent ten of his young men to Carmel with this message for Nabal. Peace and prosperity to you, your family, and everything you own. I'm told that it's sheep shearing time, and while your shepherds stayed among us near Carmel, we never harmed them. Nothing was ever stolen from them. Ask your own men, and they will tell you this is true. So would you be kind to us, since we've come at a time of celebration? Please, share your pro any provisions you might have on hand with us, and with your friend David. Nabal's young men gave this message to Nabal in David's name, and they waited for a reply. It's interesting to me that the future king of Israel is so gracious in his request. See, instead of marching into Nabal's house, reminding him of services rendered and demanding payment on the spot, he has his men bless Nabal and his whole household, and then asks for some leftovers. Any provisions you might have lying around. And Nabal? Nabal had the gall to not only refuse such a gracious request, but to go one step further and insult David. Take a look at verse 10. Who is this fellow, David sneered to these young men. Who does this son of Jesse think he is? There are lots of servants these days who've run away from their masters. Should I take my bread and my water and my meat that I've slaughtered for my shearers and give it to a band of outlaws who comes from who knows where? 
See, Nabal would have known who David was. His ignorance here is most definitely feigned. David, after all, was the boy who slayed Goliath. He was a mighty warrior and the former